Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our podcast, Wondering Works for Us. I'm Shelly. And I'm Beth. And today we start our epic road trip series. Yes. <laughs> it was indeed an epic it was road trip. Epic. Indeed. Indeed. It was an epic road trip. It was eight nights and nine days. That's what it was supposed to be. Correct. But I shortened it. I didn't want to give away the end before we got there. <laughs> I'm sorry. I mean, really. Spoiler alert. <laughs> <laughs> it ended up being seven nights and eight, eight days. days. Yeah, it, it was enough. It was enough. Mm. But we started our journey, which we're going to talk about today, going to lunch in Busaco. And then we moved on to Braga. And then our second day, we hung out in Braga. And then our third day, we went to Germaish. And then the fourth day, we were in Orens. And we were on Rins for a few days in España. And then we popped down to Avaru to end our trip. Yes. And so, so the middle of the trip, we were in Spain. Yes. So we traveled north from Peniche up to past Coimbra and then into Braga where we stayed, which is in the north part of Portugal. Right. So we're going to tell you about the first part of our trip today. We're going to kind of break this up because it was a long trip. And we did a lot. We did so much. <laughs> and don't get us wrong, it was fun. <laughs> Most of it was pretty fun. We had a great time. Yeah. Except for maybe the heat. It was a yeah. lot. Here's, a, here's an insider tip. Don't visit the interior of Portugal in the dead heat of summer. <laughs> it's 36, 37, 38. And for those of you back in the States, that's like 96, 98, 100. Yeah. Degrees. There was one day it was like the same as 101 or something. Oh, yeah. gosh. It was so hot. It was so hot. Now, on the coast of Portugal, it's nice. But yes. in the interior right now, it is blazing. And so that seems counterintuitive because usually if you're in the States, you go to the mountains to cool off. But here, if you go to the mountains, you are not cool at all. You are not cooling nope. off. You are colder in the winter and hotter in the summer. <laughs> but now we knew this going into it, but we... <laughs> did we? <laughs> we? We did. We did. We knew it was going to be hot. And the only reason we took this trip when we did is because... We had a canceled trip that where we were already had the dog sitters scheduled and everything was ready to go. Then that trip got canceled or postponed. And we said, well, everything's already scheduled. Let's just go on a road trip, see some places we haven't been to yet. And so we did, <laughs> even though it was hot. All right. So our first place that we went, well... Let's be honest, Beth planned this trip, and I said, okay, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> because that's how most of our trips go. I'm like, I might mention a, a thing here and there, like, oh, I'd like to see Amsterdam. And then, you know, the next thing you know, we've got a trip to Amsterdam planned. <laughs> but for the most part, Beth plans this trip, and she follows a lot of Facebook groups, so she gets some information. So... What about this place? We decided to break up our trip to Braga because it was about a three and a half hour, four hour drive from here. Mm -hmm. Which <laughs> now sounds like a long way to us. But <laughs> when it used to be like, that was easy. That was short. We'd do that in a day. Yeah, I had read about it in one of the Facebook groups. Someone had gone and had lunch and seen this place. And I realized it was kind of right on our path going up to Braga. And so we decided to do it. It was the Hotel Palacio do Busaco. Yes. Correct? Correct. The history of this place is there was a Carmelite convent established way back in 1628. What's a Carmelite convent? <laughs> well, it is Carmelite monks. Is there Carmel? No, no, there is not Carmel. What? Carmelite monks, then which I'm not is interested a, uh, anymore. <laughs> <laughs> and they built this convent, but they also created this these incredible forests. Is about a hundred and how many acres? Hundred and fifty. Two no, it's two hundred and something acres. 
And they planted all of these different trees and created all these paths. 259 acres. There we go. You found your note. Yeah. It was supposed to represent Mount Carmel, where the order was founded, and, and I quote, the earthly paradise. Oh, how sweet. So, um, it was not an earthly paradise, <laughs> but it was beautiful. Oh, it was, it was very beautiful. So, um, what happened is that the dissolution of all the monasteries in Portugal was in. 1834. 1834. Yes, there we go. And so they left the area at that time. And then about that time, a little later, the plans were to turn that convent into a royal residence. But they started the work. It's going along. They're... um, Thank goodness, preserving a lot of the convent and a lot of that, but they're adding on to it, this palace. And then because of political circumstances, they they decided not to have it be a palace. I think maybe one royal visited it or something. We're unclear on that. Yeah, it's very confusing between... The yeah, research we did the and then what they told us at the place. Yeah, but. so but it, it, the palace was built between 1888, excuse me, 1888 and 1907, and then it was a hotel by like 1913 or something like that. So it's been a hotel for a very long time, but it was built to be a royal palace. So um, it is all grand staircases and incredible carvings and beautiful tile work and oh it is a marvel it is the architecture the tile work everything you walk in and it is it is a grand hotel it is the the arches and because it's been a hotel since uh the early 1900s they have preserved some of their original you know bellboy caps and dishes and things and they have those on display and I kept telling Shelly I felt like I was in Wes Anderson's Grand Budapest Hotel because when you're looking at all those that's kind of what it reminds you of but it is so worth going and seeing this building is gorgeous and it's not that expensive to stay there actually and think it's between 130 and 160 bucks a night yeah or something so like that. I mean, they only had so many rooms they don't have very many rooms no because it's supposed to be a palace not a hotel yeah and it i mean you can certainly find accommodations in portugal for less than that but it is not uh for the five-star experience it is i thought it was fairly reasonable to stay we didn't stay we just had lunch and walked around at the most expensive hotel in portugal you mean the expen- most expensive most restaurant? Most expensive restaurant in Portugal. Which is actually not true. Well, the most expensive one we've been to so far. <laughs> yeah, it, it was definitely more expensive than we're used to, do, to paying in very reasonably priced Portugal, at least to us. So the food was incredible. It was really good. The and wine we got, was good. Yeah, it was, it was very good. And then afterwards, after we had lunch in the hotel, we got to walk around the grounds. You don't get to walk around in the hotel very much because that bottom part, you know, it's for people that are staying there. Mm -hmm. And so we walked around the grounds and we learned from a listener. Her name is Sophia. Hi, Sophia. I hope you're listening. Anyway, (laughs) she says that you can get a guided tours around there that'll tell you all about the trees and the flora and the fauna that had been planted there because the monks planted all that stuff right right and there's a lot of grottos and things like that that they built that we did not see no so I, it was hot it was hot so did we I mentioned would, it was hot yeah <laughs> it was hot <laughs> we might have so i would like to go back sometime in the spring or fall so to speak and take that guided tour i think that would be very because cool. it is beautiful there there's apparently a lot of hiking tours up there too or hiking trails yeah up there so yeah. we recommend it we also recommend that you 
check out the menu before you decide to eat in the yes. restaurant <laughs> just to make sure that you actually want to pay those prices. But, you know, it's certainly not something we'll do <laughs> a lot. Nope. But it was really good food and it I enjoyed it for this time. It was yeah. worth it. We walked around the grounds and then we visited we visited the convent there. Yeah. You can go in, you can pay two euros and walk around. It's a very, very small convent compared to what we've seen. It took us, what, like 20 minutes maybe to go through. Yeah. <laughs> and the joy of that is it's cool inside. It is. It is. And they have lovely preserved a little chapel and other artifacts from when it was a convent. And somebody spent the night there. I don't remember what its rank is, but Wellington, Officer Wellington, who became Commodore Wellington, I don't know. He was big. He helped fight the battle with Napoleon. Okay. Jake's going to kill me because I can't remember this. Okay, but. Viscount Wellington. Viscount, there we go. Who later became the Duke of Wellington, spent the night in the convent after the battle on September 27th, 1810. Is he the one that made the beef Wellingtons? <laughs> <laughs> he is not. Those are really good. I think that was probably Julia Child. No, I don't know who. <laughs> I have no idea who made up beef Wellington. <laughs> But he stayed the night there after he had won the battle or won a big battle or he did something great and then he stayed there. Yeah, with the monks. I used to be a history teacher. <laughs> you did. How far are we falling? <laughs> oh uh, anyway, so uh, the convent was lovely. If you go there, don't miss that. And it's kind of around the, the entrance is kind of around the back from the palace. And make sure you see that. And then there is a little gift shop there and a little cafe where you can get a snack or some ice cream. And, or a gallon of water. Or, yeah, or a gallon of water, which is what we got. And I think that's it for that site, isn't it? Yeah, I'd say that's pretty much what we experienced. Yeah, it was lovely. It was. Then, after that, we got in the car and drove the other hour and a half or whatever like it was. Two hours or so. To Braga. To Braga. Yes. Bra Braga. Braga. Which, I got to tell you, is one of my favorite cities so far. Yes. Oh, we loved Braga. We really did. Normally, it's considered... If you're if you're doing the tourist thing, it's considered a day trip from Porto. You can get all kinds of day trip packages to go to Braga. I personally think you need to spend more than one day in Braga. Oh, to me get too. the feel of it. I mean, you could probably see everything in one day, but you don't want to see everything in one day because Bon Jesus and the cathedral themselves. I mean, those are two major things there in Braga, and that would take you. Most of the day. Yes. And then you'd miss the rest of it. And Ugh. it's a really cool town. Yeah. And some really good restaurants and really cool places to hang out and have a drink. It is the third largest city in Portugal. And it has more churches per capita than any other uh, city in Portugal, which I... I don't know, went in three maybe besides the two major ones you just mentioned. And um, they're all right next to each all, other. They're all in there. I mean, within like walk across the street, go yeah. to a church. Go walk into another. Across the next street, go to a church. Yeah. <laughs> and I really, really enjoyed those. And you would miss all those if you were just flitting in and flitting out for the day. But nonetheless it would be pretty to see even if you only have a day and the gardens and the flowers which we're going to talk all about but yeah. yeah we definitely recommend more than one day or more than a day trip in braga yeah plus gimmer ah Maybe there we go I think, that, I think that's it it is also an incredibly cool town to see it feels very medieval with their city wall and the castle and all kinds of things and it's only 25 minutes from braga and yeah so you'll want to stay in braga and then take that trip down there. yeah and you can just go down it's also considered a day trip from porto and i don't know how you can do braga and get and 
one trip. I know. I know. Well, you miss a lot. You miss a lot. You yeah. barely see it, really. But we also really liked that town. We really liked that whole area. The first full day that we were in Braga, we decided to take a drive up the hill because Bon Jesus de Mont. Zeus on the end of Jesus. Je, bon Jesus. Jesus. Bon Jesus de Mont. <laughs> That is very close. <laughs> bon Jesus de Mont. Now, if you're from North Carolina, it would be Bon Jesus. <laughs> bon Z- Jesus. 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 I don't know why I can do that and you know. cannot. Probably, I don't know. Because usually we're the opposite. Bon Jesus mm-hmm. de Mont. Anyway, okay. that's where we went, which is a very large church and used to be convent or just church. It's a very large. I think church. it's always just been a church. A church on top of a of the hill. On top of a mountain, they say, and it is a pilgrimage site. Yes. And so people go there on pilgrimage. They always have. I mean, that's been true for many, many, many years. There are over five hundred steps that you go up. You zigzag up. These staircases, if you will. 583 steps. There we go. Says. That to get 381 up. feet up the hill. Ah. So you climb up this hill via stairs. I mean, outside. We did not. It, well, spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. We did not <laughs> so climb there is also a funicular, that a little car that will take you up. And what the pilgrims do, there are... I'm going to call them small, beautiful buildings with dioramas in them. And they are the stations of the cross. So you go up, you know, a couple of flights, if you will, and you've got a station of the cross. And so people will pause there and do their, you know, whatever they're doing for their journey. And then you go up a few more. And then the last ones are at the top of the hill where the church is. That You can also drive up there because there are several hotels oh yes like at least three or four yeah we never did really know but yeah there are hotels up there by it yeah so it's a beautiful place you can stay if you wanted to yes we i think we just we put it in our gps and it took us up the hill it didn't take us to the bottom of the steps where we could take the funicular if we wanted to we just ended up driving up the hill yeah i don't know if we did that on purpose or not well not really and we never did see the bot stand at the bottom of the steps we did not or see where the funicular leaves from when it's at the bottom of the hill but next time we'll 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 do that that. yeah the ideal thing would be go there and park Unless you're into climbing all the stairs and ride the funicular up, see it all, and then walk the steps down so you can see all the the stations stations of the cross and all of that stuff. And by the way, many pilgrims do this, climb on these steps on their knees. I can't imagine. power to you, man. It would be very difficult because it's stone, but yeah. Yeah. So this church... Is not the most extraordinary church that I've ever seen, but I was mesmerized in this place, and mainly because of the altarpiece <laughs> in it, in the church. When you walk in, you can walk in through the front door, you can walk in through the side door, of course, and we decided to do the front door because that gives you the full effect of the sanctuary. It doesn't cost anything to go inside, and the only building you really tour is the sanctuary right there. Right. But... As you walk in and you see the altarpiece at the end of the sanctuary, or the end of the nave, I guess you would call it. The front of the sanctuary. The front of it is a lifelike depiction, 3D diorama. A, is a that diorama. What, a diorama of the crucifixion. Now, of course, there's many pictures of the crucifixion and many crucifixions going on in churches. But this one had Roman soldiers in it. Yeah. <laughs> and I just stood there and looked at it like, wow. <laughs> and it had the other two people being crucified on either side of Jesus. Yes. And so, you know, there were a lot of things about it that you don't usually see 
in these scenes in the Catholic Church. And they are, li- they were life-size. They were life-size and lifelike. Yeah. And it was even like, it was on the hill. So you've got Christ and the two other guys whose names we don't know. Yes. Anybody want to figure that one out? <laughs> or s- beside him. And then there's a mountain, like it's built a mountain 3D coming down. Yeah. And the soldiers are kind of, you know, just standing around guarding him, I guess. Most of the time in paintings that I've seen, he's surrounded by his apostles or Mary's there or people. It's never Roman soldiers. Mm-hmm. And so, of course, as a historian, I was like, this is cool. Yeah, <laughs> this is accurate. Well, and Mary is in this, but so are the soldiers. Yes. And so that forms the the altarpiece, if you will. And it is, if nothing else, just because it has this depth to it. Yes. You know, it wasn't just kind of a flat altarpiece. It had this depth and this height. To, it was it was pretty amazing. It was. It was very, very cool. Yeah. And that church had good energy, too, in my opinion. That's right. You thought it did. Yeah. I yeah. really like that. And so when you walk back out the front doors... You are greeted with the view of oh, Braga. Which is incredible. Incredible. Yeah, it's, it's, I guess, the most beautiful view you can find to overlook Braga, I would think. I guess so. It's, it's really lovely. And you can kind of see, you know, at least the first sets of staircases from the top when you're looking down there. And there's fountains everywhere. And there's... And the fountains mean something. They're symbolic for... Something uh-huh. either in the Bible or... Yeah. So it, w- it was an interesting place to visit. One of the things that we observed about all the places we went, except maybe the last one, is that because they're not on the top tier must-do lists, if you will, for people who are coming to Portugal for, you know, 10 days, is although there were tourists, it was not nearly as crowded. Not nearly as crowded. Which was lovely. Yes. <laughs> Especially in the heat. Yes. It was. So I, I am really glad we did it. I enjoyed it. Me too. One of the things that I loved most about Braga was the food. It was really the good. The food was so good there. It was. Even Scoot thinks so. <laughs> and he wasn't even there. Yes, but he's talking God, today. He is talking today. <laughs> but the food there was amazing. We ate out every night because we were staying in hotels this time. And the first night we were there, we ate at Donna Say, which was right by the cathedral, but we didn't know it. Braga is very walkable. It has a lot of great walkable streets. A lot of them are kind of blocked off for restaurants, cafes, and shopping. It's mm-hmm. just a beautiful place to walk around, plus the gardens there. Even if you don't go in the main garden, you're, they've decorated it so beautifully with yeah, flowers. They, they did really nice work with the plantings. And that first night in, did you say Donna Say? Donna Say. Donna Say. Donna Say. Uh, it was looking down the hill at the arch yeah. that's in the town. The Is that Arco a Arco de Porta Nova. And is that a Roman arch? I don't I know assume. if it's Roman, but it's one of those things they want you to go see. Yeah. And the sun was setting right behind well, it. it. You was, know what? Okay. I'm going to go back and say that it was definitely Roman because Braga is a Roman town. Oh, yes. Yeah. It is like the older than Portugal town. Yes. Isn't that odd? It the, is. It's there <laughs> is a city in the country of Portugal that is older than the country, the country of Portugal. Portugal. Yeah. And so that arc is there, the arch arc is there, that you can eat dinner on that street and look down and watch the sunset yeah, over it. Yeah, it was it's lovely. beautiful. And so highly recommend you do that. But the one place we say don't skip is the Frigidirish. Yes. The I didn't even know these existed. The Frigidirish du Cantinho. It's probably Cantinho, and I don't know it. I'm going with Cantinho. Um, They were established in 1796, and they invented a sandwich called, wait for it, the Frigid Irish. Still made there. It's this cool puff pastry that has minced veal in it. I don't think I quite understood that when I ordered it, 
because mm-hmm. it was a big thing on the menu. I didn't know what I was getting at the time. Yeah. I was just like, I want to try this. And so I ordered it with ham and cheese in it because you can get other stuffings if you want to. Right. You can add it to yeah. this minced veal that's already in but it. But the veal was the best. Yeah. I would say it was the best sandwich I've had. It, and and it's it not was, really a sandwich. And it was flaky and <laughs> flaky. Yeah, and buttery it it was and quite. The meat was good and highly. Re- you got to go there. So you can find them, I guess, at other places in Braga. The these sandwich, but the real one that still has its secret recipe, whatever that is, is the at the Frigidirish du Cantino, and it's a really cool place on the outside. You know, you think, oh, this that's a cool sign. It's or, just a cafe. It's just yeah. a cafe, whatever. But if you go inside, you see that in the 1990s, they were renovating this building inside, and they discovered Roman ruins underneath their floor. And then me? <laughs> and so it dates back to the first and second centuries. <laughs> so they... The, f- the floor tiles, if you will, in a good portion of the restaurant are clear. So you can see down into the ruins. And then they have a model uh, back by the bathrooms. There's a model of what's underneath the floor. So yeah, that's pretty cool. I thought that was pretty cool. So definitely eat while you're in Braga. Food is so good. So the other place we went in Braga that we would highly recommend you go see is the Cathay... Uh, the Braga Cathedral. I promise I've only had one sip. <laughs> <laughs> Has your gin and tonic, honey. <coughs> it's quite lovely. Oh, good. I'm glad. So the Braga Cathedral was actually the very first Portuguese cathedral. And it was built several decades before the actual founding of the country. Yes, that is true. Yeah. In what, that's 1070? 1089. 1089. It's when it was dedicated and consecrated. Uh So it was done by then. And it was the most important religious site in Iberia at that time. And it had an influential role in the formation of the independence of Portugal. Really? How? Well, all the... (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to ask you, you that. Know, you know, the grand poobah of the, the grand Catholic poobah. Church, whoever that was at the time. The archbishop? Yeah, the archbishop. Yeah, okay. He he was very influential, as were his... Other fellow. archbishops? Yeah, I guess. <laughs> from that area, and they, they were just very... Uh, well, all I know is is influential. The grand poobah. <laughs> And uh, you, obviously we're not Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> no, we are not. And we don't mean to make fun of the Catholic faith in any way. Yeah, I think I might be cutting this out. <laughs> <laughs> we just, it's just, I don't know. We don't know the terms and we're not very religious ourselves. And, you know, anyway, moving on. <laughs> We went there. Yes, we did. And we didn't insult anybody while we were there. I, I don't that think. That we know about. That we anyway. know about, yes. <laughs> and one of the things that you can do, you can, do you, if you go into just the cathedral, you buy a ticket, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's like two euros just to see the nave sanctuary section, which yeah. happens to be the oldest section of the cathedral. Correct. Now, if... You have time. We highly recommend that you also pay for an additional thing where you get to see maybe four side chapels and three three side chapels. Yes. And then the high choir, as it's called. It has all the choir stalls and all of that. And it's also right. It's it's upstairs, if you will. It's like on the second level. And so you also see they have two incredible organs and they are considered the best examples of Iberian organs in the world 
one of them has about 1,500 pipes, and the other one has 2,500. They are incredible. They are, uh, yes. Yeah. And if you walk into the sanctuary and look up, you can see them. But yeah. you get a much better view if you go to the high choir. And you can tell that they, along the, the space where they occupy, along with the high choir and all of that was built later because it is very high baroque with all of its ceiling decoration and all of that right next to the rest of the cathedral there, which is not. <laughs> so it's obvious yeah. it's from two different times, but it is gorgeous and it's worth doing that extended tour for us. Now, we were there in July, so high tourist season, but for us, it was just Shelly and I and our guide who took us up there and in those, did you say three? There are three other Three chapels. additional chapels and told us all kinds of history. It was really interesting. Yeah, he was a cute kid. Yeah, it and was those, fun. Those three chapels, you get to go into the Founders Chapel, which actually, warning, you get to see a mummified body in. A real one. A real one. Sometimes one you of wonder, the archbishops, as a matter yeah, of fact. Sometimes you wonder if they're real when you see them in those little glass, um, I don't know, things that are like on in a side chapel or something when you're going into the European churches and you wonder, is that really one? No, this one, you that can tell. Real. Yes. Yeah. And all of the chapels I believe we went in were graves for many different people that were involved in the church, too. Yes. We could probably look those up if you wanted us to, but you can learn about them when you go. Yeah, exactly. And then the one, there was one other chapel that was really interesting because the walls of the chapel had the Moorish frescoes painted on them. Yes. Which were really, really old. And th was that the actual oldest chapel, I think? Well, he said it was, but according to the pamphlet I got, it's not. Oh, Okay. Uh, but it is, they were in the 13th and 14th century, so that's pretty darn old. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Indeed. And you, and that wall, that is one wall that hadn't been reconstructed, so it still had a crack through it from the earthquake of 1755. Oh, yeah. So that's, that's right. pretty neat to see. Yeah. It was very interesting to see it. Yeah. I'm glad we paid the extra euros. It's only five euros to do the whole thing. Do yeah. it. It's yeah. worth it. It is worth the money. It really is. And it really didn't, even though we're talking about it a lot, it really, in total time, it was less than an hour. Yeah, it was definitely less than an hour. And you're there on a great square where you can come out and have an afternoon drink if you want to. Yeah. And also right there is the Pea Place restaurant that has fantastic ribs. So, you know, pop yes. in there and get some of those. We highly recommend, again, that's Pea is in Paul, Pea Place is the name of this restaurant. It's right there uh, outside of the front of the cathedral. It's run by two brothers, we think. Yeah. And um, our service was great. The food was great. The ribs were so good. They were really good. So really good. Highly recommend that. Yeah. Other things you need to see in Braga. <laughs> Number one, <laughs> definitely take a walk through the historic old town. That's going to lead you down by the Ark. It's going to lead you through all where the little shops and restaurants are. And they have some great shops through there. And they're not just geared toward tourists. There's a lot of like antique little places. Mm -hmm. There's pottery. There's several different shops that we, you know, yeah, stopped like and home looked goods at. Home and, goods. Yeah. It's a really neat section. And there's part, I think the University of Braga is right in there. Yeah, it's, um, as we said earlier, Braga is not always on the tourist list for the must-see things if you come to Portugal for seven to ten days kind of thing. There were definitely tourists there, but it was not nearly as crowded. And so I also think that through the old town, a lot more people, a lot more... Uh, Portuguese or people who have lived there, lived there a very long time, they also live, still live in those areas. So you have a much wider variety of things. Yeah, that's true. And you need to walk down the side of the, well, it's not really a street. It's the main, yeah, it's the main road through historic Braga and see the Santa Barbara Gardens. Yes. Those, they're beautiful. It is a small garden compared to what I thought we were going to see with a nice dragon sculpture out there. Yeah, it, was, it wasn't like a 
botanical garden where you spend four hours. It was something you stroll through. This is a 20 minute stroll through. But it, beautiful. But yeah, we walked through it waiting, you know, between our afternoon drink and waiting for the restaurants to open. Yeah. Because, you know, we're tired and hungry and want to eat early, (laughs) comparatively (laughs) speaking. But definitely go down and look at the gardens. There is the Palacio de Rio, Rio, I believe is how it's pronounced, uh, that we did not visit inside, but it's a beautiful building to see on the outside. It has all those azulejos on the oh, outside. Oh, it's gorgeous. It's right down <laughs> by, really by the Avenue de Libertad. And you'll put a picture of that on when you... Do the, put yeah, up the it'll blog be post. on the blog. You, they can see a picture. And I will definitely, because we will for sure go back to Braga. We loved it. I will want to go in there next time. We just ran out of time. We did. We thought three days was enough. <laughs> we did. Yeah, but one of our days we ended up going to Germayish, we'll, which we'll tell you about in our next podcast, I believe. Because this one is 43 minutes long. and Well, well actually, it's not that long because there's a part I have to cut out. Quite a bit. But there's about 30 minutes in there. So, also, Braga has more churches per capita than any other place in Portugal. So, I popped into three or four more churches that we were passing, and I said, Oh, the door's open. I'm going in. And every one of them kind of blew me away. The tile work, and some of them had sort of a Rococo kind of feel to them, and Baroque. And it was, they were all really gorgeous. Some of them small, some of them larger. And so they're all taken care of very well. Very well. So I recommend if you do like to see churches, different, ki- different types of architecture and churches, and you have the time as you're strolling around, pop into some of those churches when you see the door open. Because I found some really great ones. If you're staying in Braga... Uh, We would definitely recommend that you stay close to the city center so you can walk around very easily. We stayed at the Hotel Donna Sofia. It was reasonable right there in the middle of everything. We were able to walk to everything we wanted to go to, except, of course, Bon Jesus. Zezus. (sighs) Zezus. Zezus. Here we go again. (laughs) Except for Bon Jesus. Jesus. Which I have a hard time saying for some reason. <laughs> but anyway. And yeah, that was a great place to stay. Highly recommend. It's right across the street too from the Frigidaira. Yeah. Yeah. Food. That that was a good place to stay. Yeah. And they it's have. It's right around the corner from the cathedral too. Yeah. It's, it, right, it's there. right there in the middle. Was there anything else we could say about Braga? I don't think so. Highly recommend it, and we will definitely oh, go back. Going back, definitely. Even just to see the little things we didn't get to see the second tier, the third tier stuff. Yes. All right. Well, that concludes part one of our road trip series. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on to your hats. Braga, because next week we're going to talk about Germaish. Germaish. Yes. Hopefully, nobody will be angry with me for miss pronouncing that too badly we'll practice it before we'll practice then. before we do that and tell you all about that lovely city the birthplace of portugal and then what's after that we go north into espana yes so we may do both of those in one podcast that is a possibility Maybe. although we've got a very interesting story about our end so you know we do indeed stay tuned for that one <laughs> All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Thanks, everybody, for listening. And as usual, subscribe, hit us up, let us know how we're doing. Thank you for everything. And if you want to buy us a coffee or a gin and tonic, go ahead and click the link in in the show notes and help us out a little bit. All right? Yeah. All right. So it's a lovely afternoon. So we'll say boa tard. Boa tard.